How do you feel about where Seattle is right now? I feel Shaking better. up going in. A little better, right? I mean, that was a complete performance. In the first two games, they looked somewhat lethargic. Again, part of that is the offense that you had out there, it's backups. What they are you really They played more expecting? starters, right? Yeah. Like, you, you had Gabe Jackson, you had Damian Lewis out there, you saw some Will Disley, you saw still no R- Russell Wilson, still no DK Metcalf, still no Tyler Lockett. But you saw some more, they had more of their top-line players that were available. They did, and, and I felt that in certain spots you saw glimpses from players that I think are going to have to take a big step forward to make sure that this team is... I think, continuously progressing. Because for the most part, this is a team that largely, and there have been some additions, like Gabe Jackson, Gerald Everett, Kerry Hyder, but largely has kept what it was last season intact. And I think that you need some young players with that in mind to actually start to deliver on the promise that we've seen not at all on the football field. I would say with Marquise Blair, and specifically him, you have seen a little bit of, of flair from him in the past, but not in, I think, long doses. And the same thing with Daryl Taylor. He hasn't played yet. Those two guys, Danny, are the ones that I'm coming out of this game and thinking that what they were doing in that game makes me feel like it is possible that the two of them could both be the kind of contributors for your defense going forward long-term and short-term that you're just going to need because you don't have enough of those playmakers on defense outside of the guys who have been doing it for a while. Do you like going in four linebackers? Their, their, their final roster as it stands right now, unless they add a guy from outside, are you okay with four linebackers? Because I'm not sure if there's more than that that make it. You've got Bobby Wagner, Daryl Taylor, Jordan Brooks, and then Cody Barton. Do you think that Nick Ballore makes it as a I play every single position kind of guy? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, maybe he's there and you, and you trust him enough to play backup linebacker. Are you good there? Are you good if it's those five guys? I think so. I, I would hope that you – well, I guess I'm not hoping, but I would assume that you're going to play less base defense. But the Seahawks do love to play base defense a lot, and that would potentially leave themselves vulnerable to being decimated by one injury. Okay, and then let's go from there and skip over to corner. Trey Brown, Pete Carroll said – they're hoping that he's back. It wasn't a big deal that he had a sore knee last week. He didn't practice and he didn't play. Are you good at corner? Your corners right now are Akella Witherspoon and DJ Reed. Probably your starters with Trey Flowers and Trey Brown as the backups and then Ugo Amadi also factoring in there. Are you, are you good at corner or do you need uh, to add one? That's a big question. I, I would like to add one if I could. Uh, whether that comes with a guy who's a last-minute roster cut or that comes via a trade. And you know the one I've been saying a couple of times already this offseason, Stephon Gilmore. I don't know what's going on there. Probably would involve a contract extension of sorts, you would assume. But also you would assume that with the way that the CBA is structured, that he would show up for game one to get that first paycheck. Do you trust, after DJ Reed, any of these cornerbacks? I don't. You know that Trey Flowers has been out there before, right? So it's not like the the cupboard is completely bare. It's someone who is able to function in your defense but has been a weak spot, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's someone who's able to and understands, like you've seen what that is. And there are – you can hold out some hope that he has some sort of breakthrough. But, look, you've also seen the limits of what he can do, which is he's someone that when the ball is in the air struggles to make plays on the ball and is prone to penalties. Trey Brown is someone that you're hoping – is 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 a good fit for this defense, even though he's a dramatically different body type than than you are right. generally featured at corner. And Akella Witherspoon is is the guy that you're you're sort of saying, hey, maybe a, a fresh environment for him, an opportunity, a, a new situation allows him to to tap into the potential and the reason that he was such a high draft pick. That he's he he's the kind of corner that we generally like. We would have liked to draft him. Now we'll see if it works out after it it didn't really it didn't really happen for him in San Francisco. Yeah, and uh, you know that's you got that out of DJ Reed in the exact sort of same circumstance, and and you're hoping sort of for a little bit of that with Kerry Hyder, but. It's a positional group that definitely has more questions than answers, and I, I think for anybody not named DJ Reed, and even with him a little bit, trust has to be earned. Right now, it's a completely blank slate that you're not expecting much more than the results you would get with a lottery ticket with any of these guys. And then the big uncertainty I think that most people are going to be watching for is Rashad Penny. 
I don't think there's much of a chance that he gets traded or cut. But I also think that Alex Collins is probably your number two back right now, given what you saw in the preseason. Alex Collins does have a thousand yard season in in his in his background. He's someone that has, I, I think, in a heads-up competition, you ask me who's who's been the better back so far this preseason, I think my answer is Alex Collins. Yeah, Collins looked awesome in this game. Uh, awesome. I, I, he was juking people. He was bouncing off of contact. There's one play, he goes to the left, and he reverses field, and he was able to pick up a couple of yards on the other side of the field. He didn't get the first down, but he looked way better than just about everybody on the field that he was out with. And look, yes, he's going up against backups. Important to note that still. He, I think, showed a degree of confidence and I would just say more explosiveness than you saw out of Rashad Penny in this game. And Penny played well, too. I, I, I thought he, he's continuously slowly taking steps forward, but Collins looked like the guy that you saw uh, that in, in 2017 in Baltimore who I thought was a really good running back. And if that's that guy, I mean, you got to give him some looks this coming season. This is a low-key strength for this team. The running back, their their running back position group, it's it's better than it's been in a number of years. I think you I, I think you should feel better about that. DJ Dallas has looked really good in the preseason and is going to make an impression on special teams. You can say it, DJ Dallas. There you go. Even though he didn't play on Saturday, like when Pete Carroll says he showed everything he need to sh- needed to show so far. Alex Collins has looked extremely, extremely competent. I do think that there's still some upside with Rashad Penny, even though I'm not expecting it. Then Chris Carson hasn't played a lick so far, which is about really exactly what you would want in the preseason. That's the one guy that you absolutely didn't need to Zero. see anything from in August. Right, but still, when you saw him in training camp, I mean, he looks like Chris Carson. So, yeah, you know what? That's a good point. Um, and who would have thought that? And Penny is Penny does have that explosiveness. Can he get to it in short volumes? That's what I wonder about And it's still, though, a better spot than they were last year even where depth was a problem for them. I mean, remember that weird stretch in the middle of the year where they didn't have either of them. It was it was ugly, and they need to be able to run the football to succeed under Pete Carroll. The one hint of, of hope and optimism that came out of it and something that I had not – I've not been expecting much from D. Eskridge, especially the first half of the season. Me neither. He's been out for a significant chunk of the offseason in the first couple weeks of training camp. He he practiced last week with the with the toe injury. He played. I thought he looked really good. I, I know that everybody liked the speed that he showed in the way on the end around because it was like, oh, Seattle's going to get to do that too, something that we've seen the Rams be very effective with. I was blown away by his catch. The catch. If you go back oh, yeah. and look at that, it was it was tough. It was acrobatic, and he made a, he made a really good grab in which you could tell all he was focused on was his hands getting to that ball. He caught it with his hands and didn't really care much about his body positioning or how he landed afterward. I thought it was really impressive. We didn't learn much about his ball skills as a wide yeah. receiver. We I think we assumed he's a burner and he's got yeah. a running back background. So is he going to be the kind of guy that can go up there and make catches? That was a hell of a catch. You ain't kidding. The the question that I have always about guys from smaller schools, and I believe he's from Western Michigan, I know yes. it's one of the directional <laughs> Michigans, is when you're that much fast. If at Western Michigan and you're you're getting drafted in the second round as a wide receiver, you're faster than all the guys that are covering you. Like you're 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 a flat out burner. Like you you are one of the most. What's it going to be like when the guy you're cover that's covering you is just as fast? Are you going to be able to make catches against guys that are just as quick, just as explosive, and maybe even more so? And that was the kind of play of like, you're like, no, that's a receiver catch. And that's something that somebody goes up like Doug Baldwin. That's the kind of catch that a guy like Doug Baldwin makes where, man, he just he catches anything that's near him. That's, that's one of the tricky things with, with wide receivers like this, especially, as you mentioned, in the smaller schools. I mean, Jerry Rice coming from, what was it, Mississippi Valley State? Mm-hmm. How how are they to determine whether or not he actually had that kind of game speed that he had? But then you watch him in the games, and he he was like playing at a completely different speed than he was running at. And that's my hope with Eskridge. And and look, I'm I know I'm making a lot out of that play on the end around on the right sideline. But just watch the way he runs on that play. I mean, it is very clear that he is not even close to going to top gear there. And I just want to see what happens when he's able to get to that level, especially against some of these players. He's definitely got speed, that is for sure, and it's great to see. And in addition to that, yeah, I think I can go up there and make a catch.